dinner party at the Feathering Tins anyone? Today I'm showing you how I put together this Feathering Tins inspired uh, home floral table arch extravaganza in uh, the abridged version. I have a much longer detailed version that I will make sure is linked for you. Uh, this is just the TLDR version for those of you that are gonna take this and run with it and make their own thing. Now this is only inspired by the Featheringtons, especially Penelope. I love how borderline obnoxious some of their looks are because I too wear obnoxious things sometimes that are over the top. And I thought, well, if you were having a dinner party at their place, what could it possibly look like in the spring? And this is what I came up with. Now technically there is a full version with the table set and everything, that's a whole other video, but this is just focusing on the floral part. Now the table arch, if you are new to my channel, no worries, I'll link it to you. Uh, the chicken wire is really made out of plastic and it's left over from this Bridgerton project. Um, but the table arch is something that I have used many, many times. It's an easy Home Depot Lowe's project. Um, and you only need one piece of foam for that big floral arrangement you see on the right hand side of the finished product. Everything else is just going into this plastic chicken mesh and it's so easy. Uh, now the greenery is the floral foundation of this project. Foundations are very important. I got mine from Shop Wild Things because I think the quality is really good and for foundations like this where you really need an impact and I, my opinion, I think you need lots of different layers, uh, especially because if you look at a regular tree, they're going to have lighter leaves on the outside because it gets more sun, darker leaves on the inside, and I really wanted this to be a layered, textured, colorful element. So I'll link everything down below. Most of the other florals, uh, including these kind of mini foliage, like they're not quite flowers, but they're not quite, quite foliage, are coming from Hobby Lobby, uh, just because I wanted the, a huge range of options and I was able to putz around the store. Now, this is the short version, so I'm gonna keep it short. Start your bigger flowers in their key locations. So you can see my lilies and the bougainvillea are kind of the bigger, um, focal floral, if you will. And then since you'll have those clusters, start filling in from there and working your way out. At least that's what I did for this project and it worked really well. I also used a lot of um, dangling foliage at this point because it helps fill in as you tuck in flowers. It'll help fill in between the gaps a little bit and you just kind of tuck it in. Now just so you can see, I have a lot of different flowers, but I also picked up some of this kind of filler foliage. It's kind of a vine. It's kind. It's not anything crazy amazing, but I picked this up at Hobby Lobby because I wanted something to kind of fill in and texturize the top a little bit because you're not going to be able to see as many flowers up there anyways. And while we're talking about that, in my opinion, I think it's best to start from the bottom and work your way up because in this instance, we're not gonna be seeing this from across the ballroom. This is gonna be in your house. So you're gonna be sitting under it most likely or using it as a buffet looking up into it. So in, in, for my application, it's more important to have the bottom looking really nice than the top. You know, you still want the top to look nice, but you don't need it to look as perfect as you probably want the bottom to look. Now, since there's a lot of floral already on, I thought, you know what, let me fill in this right side. And you might be asking yourself, why did we do the right side with this big arrangement? Well, in my in 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 situation, I have a, I'm renting, so I have this big chandelier that I can't really do anything with. I can't make it shorter, I can't move it. So we're doing the best of what we've got. So if you can see, this right side has very large floral arrangements on top. And as your eye cascades across this piece, this, this floral arch, you'll see on the left, on the lower half, we have some beautiful colorful lanterns. It creates this nice shapely kind of S swervy shape. And that's what keeps your eye interested in moving along. So it's still beautiful, still great. I love it. Now this is what it looks like on our table without any linens or any more formal settings. So this would be beautiful just as it is. For a nice spring tablescape it would also be great if you just did it one-sided for a buffet uh, but i did mine both sides which let's be honest is going to 
double the cost because you have to fill in double the flowers but I believe it's worth it because it is gorgeous we've already eaten under it and I can't wait to do some entertaining with it because it is just beautiful here's what it looks like from the other side just so you can kind of get a sense of the close-up of the flowers I like having a wide range of flower texture shapes and sizes keeping within the color palette which in this instance was inspired by the Featheringtons especially Penelope Featheringtons dresses so lots of pinks greens yellows just really bright beautiful spring colors and I hope you guys enjoyed this if you need more detail like I said there's a whole 30 something minute video going into great depths on how I did what I did and if you're new to floral arranging or silks or anything and you want some tips that is going to have a lot of great information for you additionally if you want to take this one step further allow me to show you my tablescape that I did with a full-on formal look I think you guys are gonna love it here it is now I have a whole table scape only video that I'll show you how I put this together some of my thought processes what I'm looking for etc I think it's helpful and I think if you're trying to make this a more formal setting for you to do something nice and intimate at home you're gonna find this helpful thanks so much for watching you guys I hope you found this helpful for more Bridgerton projects make sure you check out my Bridgerton playlist which currently includes a really easy to make DIY reading nook that obviously you should be reading your Bridgerton books under because it's very dreamy, it's comfy, it's cozy, and I'm kind of obsessed. And more importantly, it was really easy to do. Subscribe if you're into this type of content. You're not going to want to miss what I have coming up the rest of the year.